Okay, I think we'll make a start. I'm afraid there'll probably be lots of people streaming in if any of the other workshops are anything to go about. But thanks very much for coming. My name's Josh Ryan Collins. I'm joined here by Rob Van Hilton. Um, I work for the New Economics Foundation uh, based in London. And we're going to talk today about um, time banking and um, how you, you know, the challenge we, we face in uh, a European context, which I think is similar to the challenge you face here in the US, as to how we manage uh, an aging population um, with a monetary system that essentially doesn't value uh, the skills and the capabilities that those people have. And um, I'm not going to do too much talking because I want Rob to talk, talk through uh, a very interesting program that they've developed in Holland, in the Netherlands, called CARE. And this is a system that really takes on head on the demographic crisis that we, we face in Europe and also the austerity crisis that we're facing where we have massive cuts to uh, health care uh, as well as many other social services. Um, and in particular, what I like about the, the model that Rob's going to talk about is the way that it works with uh, public agencies, healthcare agencies, and enables them to leverage spare capacity within the community. Um, time banking, which the New Economics Foundation helped bring to the UK in 2000 with David Boyle's work um, and help from Edgar Khan, who's speaking just next door also about time banking, um, has traditionally been um, uh, the, held in um, smaller groups in communities, sort of person-to-person -person model that some of you may be familiar with. And we, we still have many of these kinds of um, time banks in the UK. Uh, but more recently, we've had some developments um, where we've got public agencies more involved in the, uh, the schemes. And this, we think, is the future of, of time banking in, in the UK and the European context more generally. Um, and um, we think NEF has been supporting an organization called SPICE in this work and also We've been working with, with Rob Van Hilton at, at COIN. So just to introduce Rob, he's the co-director of COIN, which is a Dutch agency for community currencies. He's an expert on many other currencies apart from time banking. Uh, he's worked with Let Schemes, helped introduce one of the largest of those schemes to Holland. And he's currently working with NEF on a ICT platform to enable the exchange of complementary currencies with mobile phones and other advanced channels. Um, so we're, we're collaborating with COIN, have been for the last three or four years, and we're really excited um, about this particular project, which I will now hand over him to talk through. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much, Josh. Um, I'm going to step in front of the screen, because otherwise I don't really know where I am in my story. Um, Next slide, please. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a bit about the financial and demographic developments in the Netherlands, which led to a group of organizations who took an initiative. Um, then I'm going to tell in more detail what that initiative did look like. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots on how the platform is actually working. So next slide. OK, we've got two operations happening at the same time um, by the Dutch state at the same, um, uh, at the same time. One is, is that um, the Netherlands is a graying society, like many European countries. And in that perspective, we, s we see that the cost of our social domain um, is growing at a very, very rapid speed. And the, the previous structure, which was very much funded from the national governments, was roughly not um, viable anymore in the long term. So um, about eight years ago, um, the Dutch government started to actually reform the full social sector in the Netherlands, and um, which roughly led to um, well privatization of healthcare, um, which means that everybody, um, um, the, the, the national pen, uh, the national um, uh, healthcare insurances were privatized. Um, it's still obligatory to enroll in a program, and the private healthcare companies can't refuse you. Um, in the basic insurance that they have. But anyhow, it's a privatized, um, a private companies that now run the healthcare sector. 
Second, what was very important is that where traditionally the, 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 the Department of Social Affairs in the Netherlands um, was responsible for the full domain of health, of well-being, of employment, um, started to hand over responsibility and budgets to the local governments, to city councils. Um, and in that, they, um, uh, that led also to, well, severe budget cutbacks. As they said, you as a city council are so much closer to um, uh, uh, society that you are in, in a position to have much more um, uh, um, tailor-made programs that fit in your precise situation that will be significantly cheaper. So that's a top-down operation that the Netherlands went through. And currently we're in the process of finalizing that. The second is, um, uh, well, a story that many, applies to many um, uh, countries. Um, well, we saved a couple of banks, we saved a couple of countries um, in their financial situations. Um, that led to Europe become, becoming much more restrictive in the budgets or the overspending of budgets of governments. Um, uh, and we were, of course, one of the first to say that you can't overspend. Um, but suddenly we're being confronted with the consequence of that as well, that we're contributing a lot of money to the European Union in saving banks and countries, that suddenly we don't have that much money to spend locally anymore ourselves. Um, so and that leads to severe public cutbacks, additional on top of the preview, the fruit operation number one, uh, mainly hitting the social domain. Um, yeah, I take an example on how that had hits. Um, uh, Zutphen is a small city, or for Dutch standards, it's an average-sized city. It's probably um, a nice mean for the rest of the, of the country. The biggest city in the Netherlands is Amsterdam with 750,000 people. So um, uh, 50,000 people city we're talking about. They have an annual budget of approximately 120 million euros, will be approximately 150 million um, a dollar. Um, and they have to cut back 16 million. Um, well, 15% cutback could be doable, you'd say. But then, of course, the problem is, is that um, uh, more than 75 million of that annual budget is fixed in long-term contracts with waste companies, with staff, with um, assets they have. So they can't really move. The remaining 45, the, the, the flexible part is roughly about 45 million. And that is mainly happening in the social domain. So what you now suddenly see is that um, uh, this city is um, forced to take one third of the social domain away and really reform its situation to, uh, well, and the question is, which services do we keep operational? Which are we going to close? And how can we engage the civil society to take over probably a large part of the responsibility that currently the city is, um, um, uh, is facing? One of the standard reactions, mainly from our previous prime minister, is, well, go ask people to start volunteering. We did that in the 50s. We can do that again. But of course, that's two generations ago. And um, uh, in globalization, in privatization, um, uh, we roughly lost the gene to take care of each other. And um, you know, it's already something that I like you on Facebook. So let's stand that I go take care of that wicked neighbor of mine um, uh, who's sort of with disabilities, and she smells a bit. So, um, but generally spoken, that is the solution that everybody says, um, that's great. Next slide. And that brings us to the partnership. COIN, we started researching community currencies in 1993. We started studying community currencies um, uh, in um, uh, 1993. Of course, came across time banks quite quickly. We met Edgar Kahn and a lot of other people. And we see how time banks can help to organize the civil society. But what we also see is that it's mainly grassroots initiatives organized by you and me and taking responsibility ourselves. Though, and, and we see that it is working, but in terms of time banks being a strategic instrument that I, as an elderman or as a mayor, can implement in my municipality to support the process of the cutbacks and make sure that um, uh, uh, the, the, the civic society takes responsibility, a time bank is not necessarily the ideal instrument immediately. Anyhow, in the Netherlands, there's a group of partners that came together and thought, well, perhaps we can try to learn more on, on how to change that. And those partners are, next slide. The first one is PGGM, which is the um, second biggest pension fund in the Netherlands. They have um, over 150 million, billion, 200 billion um, of assets. 
um, and they see that the stock exchange is not delivering as much return as they hope. Um, they are looking for alternative ways to, um, uh, well, to ensure a proper pension for everybody. Currently, the pensions are slowly decreasing and it's not indexed anymore to inflation. Um, sometimes they're just being from a top, um, from your last income, it's going to be to your mean income. And they're really searching for strategies how to um, uh, come up with, yeah, well, different idea. We told them about time banks, we told them about community currencies, we told them about what's happening in Japan with the Fureya Kipu, and they got slowly interested to see, well, perhaps we can do an in-kind or partially an in-kind pension. If we could support community currencies, if we could support time banks, or mechanisms like that, that might potentially make it possible to well, have a different strategy to ensure my old age um, uh, with a proper pension. Next. The other big partner that stepped in is Rabobank. Rabobank is the biggest bank in the Netherlands now. It's probably the only consumer bank worldwide with a triple A status. Um, it's a cooperative. It's the, um, uh, 30 years ago, we had a landscape of um, something similar to local banks New York credit unions, they went through a merger process which led to Rabobank. Um, in that sense, it's um, uh, um, yeah, a cooperative bank um, and very, yeah, it has ties deep into society. Um, what they see is a completely changing payment um, uh, uh, platform. And that Vodafone is with M-Pesa, um, one of the biggest re um, uh, consumer banks in Kenya. Um, the Dutch or the European legislation on the field of, um, uh, of, of, of governance in the financial domain is being reformed so that also community currencies are um, uh, recognized by the European Union much more as a policy instrument. And they say we want to be um, and uh, engage in a process to learn how those community currencies are working. So they teamed up as well. Next. And then we've got two private um, pension for, uh, sorry, um, uh, insurance social healthcare insurance um, um, uh, funds. Achmea is the biggest, they have 50% market share in the Netherlands and CZ is number four or something. And um, uh, well, they have a big stake also in trying to prevent costs. And they see that time banks could potentially play a role in um, well, making, uh, taking care that people take a a later professional care and for a short period. And these four um, took the initiative um, uh, to do the following. Next slide. Um, about their uh, ambitions and, and their size, those four partners together have a joint client base of approximately 5 million households, which is, um, uh, um, the Netherlands is um, uh, 15 million people. So this is roughly two thirds of Dutch society that they can reach by just because they have a direct client base. And they said, well, we want to establish an infrastructure, a platform and a community currency that, that can be used by communities like um, Zutphen and other cities, or the Red Cross with programs trying to engage other citizens in, in a civil action. Jointly, they set up a cooperative with a capital lock. So might this program eventually make a profit? Um, it will never be able to be cashed out by the partners. Um, and they said, well, we want to try to implement a de facto standard on how to do time banking in the Netherlands um, uh, the coming years. So they committed 2.1 million euros and, um, for, the, for the next couple of years. And the strategy is roughly, um, we've been building the platform of uh, the last quarter of 2011. Um, we're currently um, testing it in four different situations, four different regions in Amsterdam East, in a, in a um, deprived area. We're piloting it in a, um, um, well, suburban city middle class, a bit more up north in a small city. We're working in a, um, um, two healthcare centers, one for autistic people, and the second is for people with brain damage because of accidents. Um, and th the ambition is to start rolling it out already per October this year, so quite ambitious. And um, well, the aim is to have it um, financially sustainable by 2015 so that um, it then can become, well, a business or, or an independent self-sustaining organization. Um, they tendered out um, uh, the question, well, who can build this for us? And we enrolled with a consortium of a couple of partners and, um, uh, well, we won the bid. So now we are um, uh, into our next, into getting this operational. And, um, uh, well, that's what we're doing. Next slide, please. So what are we actually building? Next. Um, I'm going to show you step by step 
um, how the model is being built. At first, um, equalness is important. Um, uh, you might be a lawyer, I mean, you might be a cleaner. Now we're neighbors, and so we're equal. And your hour is equal to my hour. Um, because we find hours a big of a unit, um, we said, we, we're, because we also want to play a bit and, and, and incentivize people, we said, well, we take six um, credits in an hour. And we also have um, uh, integer numbers, so no commas, no, no half credits, it's just the whole credits. Next slide. Well, the core of the program is to make sure that people start helping each other, like a traditional time bank. This is really the aim, that we want people to start taking care of each other, to build narrow, fine networks in, in, in neighborhoods, in communities, um, uh, uh, to take care of each other. Time banks have proven that they can perfectly do that. In our understanding, there is one important limitation to that. And that is that um, when you start a time bank, everybody starts at zero. It's a mutual credit in that sense. So um, uh, if I need help, um, I need to get into debit um, for you to come and help me. But, um, um, well, potentially um, uh, I'm, I'm disabled or I have a long going um, care question. So, um, uh, um, uh, yeah, that it roughly stigmatizes me. To, I already had a difficult position financially and I was a bit in the, in the downside of uh, the lower um, uh, parts of the economy. So suddenly I'm, 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 I'm building up additional debts. And secondly, to a certain extent, I cannot be held accountable for the fact that I am um, I'm needing you and, uh, and that I can't deliver up to, um, uh, uh, well, what I've been using. So in what we see in many LED schemes, in many time dollar programs worldwide, we see that this is a big, um, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, how do you say, um, uh, obstacle in, um, uh, in running currencies. It makes what we call in Dutch, we, um, it makes me question shy. I'm not really um, uh, um, interested in formulating what I'm going to do. So it stigmatizes and the amount of currency that you get in, in circulation is a problem. So a often used um, uh, alternative, next slide, is that um, then the time bank organization um, goes into negative and, and just starts supplying people with credits. Um, at least now I don't have a problem anymore and I'm, I'm free to ask you and others to, um, uh, to help me. But in the long run, um, this organization does not even have the, um, uh, the, the ambition to recuperate the, 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 the currencies that it has been issuing. So this is really a fiat currency. And the result of it is a bit Zimbabwean, and um, uh, more and more currency are being spent into circulation, and suddenly everybody in this room already has a zillion time credits, and I need to now spend it, but um, because I'm still needing your help, and what I'll find is that everybody says, well, you know, I already have enough of them. I'm trying to spend it. So you get stagnation, you get inflation. And that's also what we see a lot. Um, this program needs to be designed at a, level, uh, at a level that it potentially could be used by 5 million households. I don't think we ever get close. Even if we would get up to 10%, that would be the biggest time bank ever. But we need to system answer to this. So we, um, with all our knowledge on time currencies, um, or, or currencies in the broad sense, we um, uh, started designing a different model. And that looks a bit like this. Next slide. Um, it's, and by the way, this is all online at first. Um, the no notes, paper-based. When you sign up to the program, we incentivize you by doing so with three time credits. When you um, uh, uh, connect to Facebook, you get an additional three credits. And by that, we slowly um, build you with an, an initial set of credits that you can start spending. And this is fiat currency. So everything that I just said was wrong, we do it as well. Um, next slide. Yeah, here you see it. Um, uh, uh, if you complete your profile, you get an additional three points. And what is very important and potentially different from many community currencies or time banks is we do not ask you to say what you can offer in terms of ads that you place. We ask you what your competences are. So if you can cook, if you can drive, if you have a car, etc. And we ask you when is roughly your availability. And then we leave it to people who are looking for demand or looking for offer to, well, go and identify you and say, well, um, uh, I see... Um, Fletcher, it is? Yeah, I see Fletcher that you, you're a good cook and uh, potentially available on the Tuesday evening. Could you help me um, on that specific day? 
And that leads probably, that's our assumption, to um, a, a quicker uptake. Important is, is that um, um, what you see in many time bank programs is that the offer is not the problem, but the, the question is where do we get demand from? And it's really the challenge to, me, to get me um, uh, to overcome my um, uh, question shyness and to actually formulate a question. Um, well, w one of the tricks that we use is to incentivize you by asking those questions. And for the first four that you drop, um, you get six points per ad. Well, in fight friends, you get a couple of credits. Okay, next slide, please. So, um, um, this is the current situation. Next slide. The second step is, is that we start issuing currency to people who are more dis disabled. So this is a full fiat currency still, and I'm going to make it a bit more um, bigger. So um, uh, Edgar comes back from the hospital. He has a broken arm, his, le his right arm. He can't write, he can't cook, um, uh, um, uh, so he needs help for the next couple of months. He can come. You need a lot of help. So he can come to the fund, to, uh, uh, to the program, and say, well, um, uh, this is my situation. Um, he's, we, we see that he has invited a couple of his friends. His friends endorse him on, the, on, on his story. And we say, well, okay, here you get um, uh, 30 credits and um, uh, come back if you need more. So we issue, we help him to get more currency um, uh, circulated so that he can start meeting his demands. Well, this is a nice balloon. We're pumping it full of air. And um, if we are not careful, it will explode. Of course, the program will grow quite quickly, so um, we can um, it's a big balloon, but still we need um, something of a regulatory instrument, so we have that in place. Next slide. Um, ever heard of a demurrage? Okay. Um, what we're doing is we're um, next slide. We're, um, uh, that's the, the first pressure control mechanism that we have, um, uh, and that's the solidarity fund. So imagine that, um, uh, um, well, that you have been earning lots of credits and you've got about 150 now and you don't really do anything with it. And Edgar is applying again for a loan. Then um, uh, we say, well, you know, um, it's Pete, what's your name? Tina, oh, sorry, Tina. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, Tina, so you have um, 150 of those credits. You don't, you don't really use them. And Edgar is applying for additional funds and say, okay, on an average basis, Tina, thank you very much for being solidar to Edgar. We take some of it. So in the whole issue and, and redeeming strategy that we have here is that we say that um, we expect in the first year an average um, uh, use of the program for every, an average member of 30 hours on a yearly basis. Where does that number come from? Um, in Wales, SPICE, the, 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 the time bank organization in, in, in the UK, um, have assessed um, uh, um, about 80 of their time bank programs. They have a specific model and they found out that the average um, amount of work that has been done is 67 hours on a yearly basis. Um, in the third year, so well, this is year one, it works a bit different, so let's take half, a bit less than half. It's a big thumb in the air, but at least we have got a number now that we can start calculating and monitoring what's happening. The second is that we expect um, that we need 25% of the total money um, to, um, uh, to make sure that we meet that 30 hours. And I just learned from you, Susan, that you even have a, you have a much lower number. You only have, um, uh, I believe, 20% or even less in circulation. So we're interesting. Perhaps this is too wide. We'll, we'll learn and we'll see. So um, on average, we need to issue 45 credits to all people in the program um, uh, who will then start spending to bring them up to 180 credits on a yearly basis. What we also said is we want half of that to come back via the demurrage which leads via calculation to 1% per month. 25% of what? 25% of the 180 credits. It's one big assumption, but it's the best assumption we could come up with. Um, so we have a demurrage at the first of the month. We look at your account and take 1% um, of your balance. In practice, that means that if your balance is lower than 50 credits, you do not have an, uh, a demurrage. Um, uh, and if you have more than 150, it will be two credits on a monthly basis. So this is the first set of control that we built in. Next slide, please. Well, balloon, it fills, it goes halfway. We can, um, uh, it, 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 it shrinks a bit, it blows up again. Um, we'll see. We, and we've got a button that we can turn 
We can increase the demerge quite easily and, or, or decrease it if we want. Um, but this is not the full use. Um, next slide. Um, there are a lot of organizations in the Netherlands that are, um, because of the severe cutbacks, um, um, also searching for mechanisms to, um, well, engage citizens in, in well, day-to-day -day operations, roughly. There's a list of organizations um, here and, and the kind of activities that they're trying to work with. Um, well, take the housing corporation. And we have the, the staircases, the stair house, to the different apartments. Currently, it's being cleaned by a, a company. Um, uh, and they charge 15 euros an hour, averagely in, the, in Europe, um, or in the Netherlands at least, per hour. So we imagine that I could get, um, uh, well, the, 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 the attendees to do, do the cleaning, and I could take the cleaning organization away. It's a bit of pity for the cleaners, and they need to find a different job. But, um, but at least you can say, well, the, in, in terms of a bit more political, um, we are taking responsibility for the environment we live in. And we're slowly building the civic society that we need. And you find that in many different situations. For example, the waste treatment as well, where um, uh, uh, currently um, separating waste is quite an issue. And the costs of that organized by the municipality are quite high. Um, early 2000, we did a, quite a big an experiment in Rotterdam, um, uh, the second biggest city in the Netherlands, where we started rewarding people like air miles or like frequent flyer miles with points for separating their waste. And that led to a tremendous uptake of the amount of waste that was being separated and um, an engagement and an understanding of citizens in why it was important to separate waste and the batteries goes apart from the, from the plastics, etc. And the costs were decreasing tremendously, or at least that was the trend, in, uh, for the waste company to manage that. So they would, are very, very interested to tap into this model. Next slide. So what we do is supply them with care credits as well where they can um, come to us and um, uh, request for a budget to start um, uh, uh, um, um, issuing, yeah, rewarding citizens to take responsibility for their environment. A challenging choice that we currently stand for is whether we are going to charge a fee for this. Because it's, of course, beautiful that we can um, uh, uh, give the housing association an option to save um, a 50 quid an hour per staircase. Um, but we also need to survive. We're looking for a business model. So why wouldn't we charge, for example, well, five euro per, per hour? It's still um, um, uh, an improvement of 10 euros an hour. This for us is a search. We're doing a couple of experiments. How far can you go? And what should be an, a good price? And, and how can it work in practice? OK, more uh, credits pumped into the balloon. It will probably break quite soon. Um, the demerge, of course, takes away immediately apart, and it's quite easy for you now to have more than 50 credits on a monthly basis, so that will work, but it's not enough. Next slide. Um, so, learning from loyalty programs, um, SPICE in the UK again started to um, organize all kinds of um, uh, yeah, rewards for citizens being active in the social domain. Um, so, um, the, sp the swimming pool probably funded in several situations by the local authorities, have spare capacity. And um, uh, there's, they, they serve a public need, you can say. They're being paid by the city council. So, um, and the fact that they have still overcapacity is to a certain extent, it's to a certain extent, uh, yeah, it's a bad situation because um, they could perform better. What we do is we talk to them and we say, um, well, please accept time credits as payment. Don't expect anything in return, but your story to, your, um, to the MP or your story to the mayor will be much better than how you're performing. Same goes potentially for the sports club, to the arts center, the education center. And um, a cinema is potentially a bit the same. It doesn't, the, the, well, imagine that we're watching a movie here and we've got a couple of empty seats and it doesn't really matter whether people additionally come in and just enjoy the ride. The cost of showing the movie remains the same. And the fact that people show up, um, they'll probably bring some popcorn, a beer, or a Coca-Cola. So that is also an additional cash stream for um, uh, the, the, the cinema running it. So for them, it's quite interesting to say, well, OK, I'll accept um, time credits. I don't expect anything in return, but I increase, increase my client base, and I at least generate a secondary money stream. It's a trick that works. It's being used by many commercial credit programs or commercial loyalty programs. So why not replicate it? 
Um, currently in the program in Amsterdam that we have, there's um, a bakery who, start, who decided to, um, uh, to sell all the breads uh, after 5 p.m. Um, that are unsold, give them away for time credits. Um, next slide. So what that leads to is that national, um, uh, wide, uh, nationwide redeem partners, this is a national platform still, um, we tap into those deals with them. And what we say is that every reward partner that wants to step into the program is responsible for organizing redeem, redemption options to the, well, for every credit they issue, they need to organize um, a place to redeem. And we can, of course, organize that for them. So now it's in balance again. This, was, this is roughly stable, and this is roughly stable. Um, uh, and then, um, well, statistics will tell us in, in, uh, if we monitor it closely whether this works in practice. Okay, next slide. It's a nationwide infrastructure, but we recognize lo a lot of local communities that want to tap in. The housing association, the municipality, the sports club, the Red Cross, you name it. Sometimes they just want to have, um, uh, well, we say we do it on the care platform, and, and sometimes they say, well, I want to do it in my own platform. It needs to have my identity. And um, that's what we call um, in Europe white label. And so you give it a different branding. It's the, sa the same techniques, the same database. It all communicates, um, uh, but it looks very different. Next slide. So this is it. Next slide. And then you get something like this. Where suddenly, um, uh, uh, well, this is me. Um, there's no local community. I'm just a member of the care community. And um, this is my mother, and she's in the Amsterdam situation, and she uses um, uh, the local program there. It's called Maki, Amsterdam slang for easy. And um, Amsterdam has, um, well, of course, its own options. They have um, a local housing association that is part of the deal, a local cinema that's part of the deal, the swimming pool that's part of the deal. I don't see it, as I'm not a member of Maki, but my mother does. I can donate my points to my mother. Um, or I can um, uh, um, work with somebody who's a member of both. Because how it, how it technically works is at the moment that you register at Maki, you automatically create a profile at the national platform. If you log in at Maki, you only see Maki. If you log in at the national platform, you see everything. And then, of course, you can be well member of two of those communities as well. Because in practice, I live in the east of the country where we have Zutphen and Maki because that's where my office is, so I do both. Questions on this? They don't, they don't. It's, we decide how much it is. We organize um, uh, the price that they receive for the seat. So, and then it's our policy to say um, a big, uh, to, um, uh, what the exchange rate is or how much it is. They don't get anything back or we negotiate the price with them. And the price, of course, that we can pay for the ticket is fully depending on um, uh, how much budget we receive by people who are paying for the points, organizations who are paying for the points being issued. Why not, why not have it be straight up time for the cinema, like they paid two hours, and why not have them be able to tap into the timing for something they might not otherwise be paying for? So okay, yeah, that's, that, that's a legal question. And the point is, is that at the moment they take it for free, it's a discount, they don't have to administer it. At the moment they want to respend it, suddenly income, they need to pay for that. And if they um, start to um, uh, issue it to other people, it might be income tax. And at the moment that you have um, a closed loop, um, it gets confusing. So what we do, we call them turbo pa super partners. They are both, but they have two wallets. They have one wallet to issue, and they've got one wallet to which is it being redeemed. And it, it, it's a bit of a stupid situation. We're trying to improve it, but it leads to a very firm line in what we say, well, this is informal economy, what we're doing. The moment you start mixing, it becomes formal economy. You include a lot of difficult discussions with tax authorities, with um, social security. We're not against difficult um, um, conversations, but we'd like to um, uh, uh, do them in our way. So this is how we start. Can I just clarify a little yeah. bit? Just because I'm, I'm not fully understanding, but what if they did something in the mm -hmm. informal economy? Like it, uh, each business, you know, every business has stuff that they just don't do because they don't have money for it. So like extra stuff, like. Having people put or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so what we currently do, in, as long as the care credit is available for free, we just have a double talk with businesses at the same time, of course, which leads to a contract um, or an agreement with them in what we say, well, how much are you going to redeem and what do you need to issue? How, how do you want to reward? 
and we just supply them with the credits that they want, as long as that we know that for every credit that we issue, there is a redemption possibility. So they are being met in their needs. I, I think Susan had a question. Yeah. Okay, great. Currently, it's a, fully, a full online system. So um, we use um, uh, um, Cyclos, which is an open source banking software for community currencies that you can highly configure, that does take care of a lot of the administrative work that you do. Um, we use it as a backend application. So that means that um, uh, people that need to administer um, can log in and just ha they see the different wallets or the different um, uh, purses that they have and um, uh, the current, uh, yeah, and, and the different accounts is the word that I was looking for. And um, that works for itself. Um, at the front end, you as a user, um, uh, you are, I'll show you some nice pictures soon. Um, uh, it looks like, well, roughly an online banking application. Um, secondly, is it talks to, it works with SMS, so that when I am in a shop and I want to redeem, um, uh, I, I send a text. Um, we expect shortly after summer to, to have the, um, the iPhone and the Android app available. That makes it possible to do um, the dialogue on, uh, uh, well, in the shops as well. In, in, in practice, the administrative burden is very light. It is mainly building the deals with the reward partners and the redeem partners to manage the fund. Um, uh, that is where the time is. And um, as given the fact that you um, work with relatively long-term contracts, you can say, um, uh, uh, it's not that much work. Important question for us is, um, how much work is it in practice? Yeah. I think it's so, a lot of work. You think it's a lot of work? Yes. I've got five minutes left. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, Tina? That's my question. I wonder if it's possible, say there's a neighborhood that wants to reach out. I mean, you don't have time. You're working at the national level or with, in a big city. You don't have time to reach out to all the small shops or all the small churches or nonprofits. Is there a way that there can be volunteer kind of neighborhood? This is, this is fully the approach. The, the, the approach is fully that we offer the platform and every community that wants to step in, please take responsibility and start organizing it for yourself. All the administrative tasks currently in Amsterdam are being executed by volunteers who are being paid in time credits. What we said first um, is we're not going to build a strong administrative regime on the fund. It is if we for sure, to a certain extent um, um, know for sure that somebody has a problem, then we'll help him. And that's going to be um, a quite a simple policy. Um, currently, we're testing a couple of models to see what works, because um, well, we're, we're really not going to build an administrative organization to do that. One of the tricks in that is that um, uh, uh, you can invite your friends, your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn friends, your Twitter friends, your real life friends, and call them one of your trusted circles. Like you have in Facebook, you can organize groups. And what you can say, well, if a couple of people endorse my story, if you like, say, well, I indeed, yeah, I know, Edna came back with broken, and you say that as well, and you say that as well, that probably is true. And at the moment that that probability is quite likely, you say, well, we supply it with a bit of currency. And then we'll monitor via a couple of um, uh, um, standard statistics and data mining principles um, whether it is fraudulent activity or whether it potentially is right. The, the only difference between a wide label community and the national platform is that it has its own identity. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I will, um, so that will become clear. Um, go to the next slides, please. Skip this. Well, have read Dutch? Here's your challenge. <laughs> um, it says, well, what is care? It seems to be English. Um, uh, hulp gevraagd, um, uh, um, 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 requested help. Um, hulp aangeboden, offered help. Um, redeem news. Um, do you like to do something for another? Um, do you ever need help for yourself? Then perhaps you're gonna go. You're gonna like care. Why? Why should I um, join? Um, uh, um, register. Um, and, and therefore we've got my care. Next slide. So we jump to my care, and here you see my wallet, uh, my overview, my care, my my um, my um, my account, my contacts, my messages. Um, well, oh, everything you want. My credits, you see that I have 18 credits. There's also like an endorsement program. I really like that you helped me, Tini. And I'm a, uh, so I, I endorse you with a smile. And I can write a little story why I really liked it. 
and then everybody can see how much of it I have. Um, so these are my, my questions, my, my, de uh, yeah, my demands. Um, next slide. Here we have an overview of my contacts and the demands that they have. And what you see is here that I can reply immediately. Um, and, the, and, and it says here, um, this um, question has been answered. So there has been a match. So it's still there on the platform, but we know that people are taking care of her. Next slide. And here you see the payment slip, the, the, the account itself. So this is um, all via APIs connected to um, uh, Cyclos. And we present it in a completely different manner because we like this much better as an experience. What is an API? An API is a, um, a, a, well, a, a socket. Um, a, yeah, exactly. I was not going to do the abbreviation, <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a socket um, a, that, uh, to, through which um, a, um, a computer program can talk to each other, internet platforms. So it says my balance. It says the, the transactions I've been doing. Um, I've got a button, I'm a pay. I've got a button donate, so I can donate money to the fund. Next slide. And um, uh, the internal message board. For secure security reasons, I can hold my, um, my message, um, my email address and my details private. And only after I say, well, it's OK, okay for Bill to contact me directly, um, uh, it supplies me with my own email address. And same goes for phone details, etc. Question? Um, I have two questions. One are the uh, points available or visible to other users that you have? No, it's not. Oh, OK. And how many people in Holland approximately would be involved? In That's the big question. <laughs> <laughs> we know that we can reach out to um, 10 um, million people now via the current partnership. Um, if we would do a mail out, we don't expect a large re um, a conversion immediately. But at least it's going to be quite visible. So currently, we are working with municipalities, with regions, with housing associations to build local programs. And through time, it, it's our experience that it takes about a year for a partner, local partnership to step in. The platform, at least, um, uh, well, when do we consider, um, uh, uh, thank you very much, um, when do we consider this um, a success? Um, we don't really know. It's um, uh, what we want to do is if, uh, to, to increase significantly the, the amount of um, uh, time that is being spent. And uh, if it's less than a million, we probably would not be satisfied. And you have my last question. Thank you. Um, how is the business community uh, responding, uh, or what's your projection of their response? As an example of the cleaning business that you're going to be putting out of business, um, how's that going to go over? And how would you be able to draw them in to participate? Good question. Um, currently, our uh, um, search is mainly on um, uh, how can we make sure that the model works fully and what the benefits of the different mainly redeemed partners are as we're trying to get them into sponsor deals. And um, uh, we don't think that that's going to be long-term sustainable because a sponsor deal has an end in itself. Um, then again, there's a lot of spare capacity, especially in downturns. So um, uh, this could be something like a marketing vehicle without be becoming um, an advertising organization. Um, so that, that's, that's the question. Um, concerning the, um, uh, the, the, the cleaning uh, organization that we put out of work, that is really a matter of bad luck. Um, this, this is, um, uh, they, they're going to be put out of work anyway because the housing association needs to cut back its costs quite severe. So and at, least, at least now we have a mechanism that potentially can keep your stair house clean. Okay. Well, this was my presentation. I believe I really am finding, um, uh, yeah, I've gone through all my time. Yeah, yeah, the point is going to start in two yeah. minutes. So. Okay, thank you very much. Sure.